Colorado violists. I'm Margaret Miller. I teach viola and chamber music here at Colorado State University. Very much looking forward to seeing all of you in person, fingers crossed, next February. So a couple of tips about both of these excerpts. Um, I started with the Shostakovich, partly because it's got long bows and it's a great way to get your whole arm warmed up. This is an excerpt that shows up on every professional orchestra audition, so it's great, I think, that you're getting started on it now, and I would refer back to it to, from time to time, because how you play it is going to change. Challenges of this excerpt are, of course, a beautiful sound, really terrific intonation, and being mindful of the underlying rhythm. The orchestra underneath you is playing quarter, eighth, eighth, quarter, eighth, eighth. So if you can keep that in your head the whole time, it will help you tremendously on the long notes. I would also suggest too, for the up bow half notes in the bar after 15 and three after 15, keep those pretty light, two before, three before 16 as well. Otherwise it gets to be almost like a downbeat if it's not too light. And just be mindful of the smoothest string crossings you can. You can prepare a little bit with your bow elbow for string crossings like that. This is also a great excerpt for listening for intervals, lots of octaves, lots of fourths, major sevenths, and everything in between. Do practice it with the metronome. It's very, very easy to speed up in this excerpt because of the length of the notes and also because of the tempo. It's you know a little slower than what I'm used to, but it's great for bow control. And because you're up high, you can keep your bow fairly close to the bridge. And also be expressive with your vibrato. Doesn't mean a wild and woolly vibrato, but just a nice narrow vibrato for the register. So enjoy this excerpt. It's from one of my very favorite symphonies. I would encourage you to listen to the entire movement. There are a few live performances on YouTube, which I think you'll find very interesting. There's also a copy of the score on YouTube. So if you're interested in looking at the score and what the entire orchestra part looks like, have at it. So the other excerpt is from the beginning of the first movement of Tchaikovsky's Sixth Symphony. This excerpt also shows up quite often on professional orchestra lists for a variety of reasons. One, tempo. It's not marked, you have a metronome marking, but the actual tempo marking is allegro non troppo, so you can keep that in mind. So the issues with this excerpt are rhythm, clarity, articulation, and of course, intonation. A couple of words about bow strokes. Make sure with the two up bows that the second up bow is really as articulated as the first one. Right? Because you want it to have a really crisp kind of sound. And then when you take over the 16th notes from the cellos, again, have that in your mind. Watch the score when you listen to a recording. Cellos have 16th notes before violas take it over. This is what I call a stick bounce. So it's not a true spiccato, the tempo is too fast for that, but if you find that sweet spot in your bow where it bounces all by, your, by itself, then you're in good shape. And then the other bow stroke issue, of course, is the ricochet. Now, a word of caution before you start practicing this etude, and especially before you record it, check the tightness of your bow you might need to tighten it just a little bit more so the ricochet is cleaner. If the bow's too soggy, it, the ricochet won't quite work as well. So ricochet on the viola, when you're on the C string, if you're tall and you can do it out towards the tip, go for it. But if you're short like me, 
more in the upper half. Think William Tell Overture. Because it's on the C string, it's really difficult to get all the way to the tip. And also, just before the ricochet, on that first half note E, save your bow. So you can be in a good part of the bow for the 16th notes. And do count the rests. You may have noticed that during the recording, I counted the rests starting at the end of measure 38. It's also very important. If it's there and it's part of the excerpt, the rests are part of the music. And once you listen to the entire piece, you realize that, oh, the violas have to take over from the second violins, who just took over the same pattern from the first violins. So it's very, very important that you count the rest also at letter B. One final note at letter B, make sure you start with your bow on the string. The other thing about this particular excerpt are the gestures. In this case, the hairpins. Make sure it starts pianissimo so the hairpin doesn't need to get very loud. And when you start and measure 34, at the end of 34, try not to get too big with those hairpins because at the beginning and the third beat of the subsequent measures, the violins have a decrescendo. Again, very important to know what other parts in the orchestra are doing while you're playing this excerpt. And certainly by the time you get to the end of measure 37 or 38, be in fifth position. This is one of those shift sooner rather than later places. some general tips for recording. Good luck everyone and I look forward to seeing you in February. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching this Colorado Allstate prep video. If you have any questions or concerns, please visit music.colostate.edu for more information, including the opportunity to schedule an individual visit with the School of Music, Theater, and Dance. Good luck on your audition.